Hey there, people. Today we continue the quest to answer all the supermarket questions. Stand by. First things first, catify the world. I get asked the same questions usually uh, at the supermarket. So today we're going to knock out the first one. Jackson, I'm trying to introduce one cat to another and it ain't going well. Today we're talking about introductions. Now, let's get down to the brass tacks. How do we introduce cat to cat? The first thing that folks do wrong is they go, well, I'm just gonna bring my cat into a room with this new cat and let him work it out. How many times have I heard, let him work it out? And how many times do they not work it out? What you wanna do is introduce these guys by scent first and then work in sight. It's all about cat mojo, folks. It's about territorial ownership. And if your cat, who has owned this territory for X amount of time, suddenly doesn't, we're getting them off on the wrong foot because you're putting it squarely in, in the land of threat. This cat is threatening your cat's sanctified space. The way that I introduce cat to cat is I use a door, right? I wanna make sure that on one side of the door it's usually a good base camp. Base camp is a room that's almost like territorial training wheels, right? Well, first I'm gonna give you this room so you get to know what the territory smells like and then we'll graduate you out of here. And I want you to make sure that you're practicing sight swapping. So what you wanna do, for instance, is you've got the cat that's out in the rest of the house, well, it's time to switch. Put this one in the bathroom, bring the other one out, take the one from the bathroom into the other room. Now this whole thing will take three and a half minutes, but I do wanna make sure that at any given time, uh, the new cat or the resident cat has a place to call their own, both a little bit away in base camp, the seat of the territory, and the whole rest of the territory. On the other side of that door, you have your resident cat, who has, you know, for the most part, free run of the house. And you're gonna introduce them at meal times. One on one side of the door, one on the other. If you are feeding meals, you're gold, man, because your cat's hungry, they're gonna wanna eat at that door, they're motivated to eat at that door, and so they're gonna overcome the misgivings they might have with that other cat. So that it's really, really crucial that you keep feeding meals and not free feeding. Give them about three feet uh, on either side of that door. Three feet uh, from bowl to door, another three feet from bowl to door, six feet total. That way we're pretty much respecting the concept of personal space and a little bit of privacy. And what are we doing? We're setting up the concept of positive association, right? So that when these cats smell food, they smell one another. Here's what I want from you. When the two cats are eating on either side of the door, I wanna see nothing. No hissing, no growling, no shenanigans under the door, no nothing. Okay, well if it's not happening, then bring the bowls apart a little bit more. So what we're doing now, as we've done in the past, is setting a challenge line, saying, you know, where is it, Mr. Cat, that you find enough confidence that you can walk up to that bowl, you know, smell the other cat, but, but smell your food and eat it and walk away. Uh, wherever that is, that's where we put a piece of tape on the ground on either side of that door. Boom, we got challenge lines on either side. And that first uh, couple of nights, walk up to the bowl, eat, walk away, and onward. Obviously, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start moving those bowls closer and closer together. We do this slowly. Remember, a cat needs to have it proven to them that this other being is not a threat to them. And the only way we can do that is having the same result over and over and over again. Every time a bowl goes down, I get my jackpot food. I get no threat to the environment whatsoever. I walk away, it's, you know, it's all good. Another part of this homework is graduate from a closed door to the gate. With the gate, you drape a towel over uh, the gate itself. So now you've got a little bit of visual space at the bottom. So now these guys can be eating their dinner at their respective challenge lines, looking under there going, wait a second, that's, a, that's another, right? It's like, I, I really want to pay attention to that thing, but it's really small visually, and this is really good food. Now the next step is an exercise that I call eat, play, love. And the idea was you take two cats who can't stand one another, 
you put them in the same room but completely supervised and the idea is you want to give them uh, experience with toys. What are their favorite toys? How do you keep them, uh, you know, interacting with you and not paying any attention to the other cat in the room through play, then through feeding a meal, then through just loving on them. I just want them to ignore one another. That's the object of the game. If it lasts for 15 seconds before one cat's like, huh, hey, what the, who's that? And then all of a sudden game on. Well, that's fine. That was 15 seconds. Always end exercises on a high note to the best of your ability because we don't want negative associations to take root. Every time these guys get in a room together, I want good things to happen. They want good things to happen. And if they do continue to happen, we will get to that point where we'll be able to open up the door and let them at each other. Everything that I just told you about introducing cat to cat works just as well when your cats have had a fight and you're trying to get them back together again. So your homework for introducing cat to cat. Number one, start feeding meals only, no free feeding. Second, meal time goes on opposite sides of a closed door. Every time you get positive results, stay with it for a few days, folks. Don't rush it. It's on cat time, not human time. Then when we get to the point where we're right at the door, a couple things you can do. Back it up again, and now you can use the baby gate type of deal, right? Where you put the baby gate down, put a blanket on top, slowly raising the curtain on the proceedings, and also bringing them together again. Repeating the same technique you used before. The other part of your homework is eat, play, love. Concept here is expanding out that mealtime ritual. Make sure you're sight swapping. Very, very important. I don't want anyone to get sort of static in one location in the house. I want it to be a mix of, of, of locations so that nobody can settle into sort of false ownership. And that's it. Finally, guys, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. I think cats should be living in groups. I think that you should have more than one cat in your life for sure. But you got to introduce them on their terms. All right, folks, I'm going to get going now. I have answered the supermarket question of the day. More to come, believe me. In the meantime, you can ask your supermarket question. You do not have to wait until I'm holding a bag of celery online at the Whole Foods. No, what you can do is uh, hashtag Team Cat Mojo right here. You see that? And send it off on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and I will see those questions. And if I get asked them enough times, I will for sure answer those questions. All right, folks, until next time. All light, all love, all mojo to ya. Mm -hmm. Love you and your multiple cats. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm, not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm just misunderstood. Meow.